For this job, we need lots of smarts. The ability to manage different departments and an incredible multitasker. Do you think you have what it takes? Finding the right CPU and RAM for your PC build is no easy task, but this video is here to help you find the right silicon for the job. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, welcome to DIY in 5, the show where we give you simple tech tips to make your life easier. My name's Trisha Hershberger, and today we continue our journey to build the ultimate PC, one component at a time. Our last episode covered your case and your motherboard. Feel free to check out that episode if you need a refresh. For this episode, we are looking specifically at CPU and RAM. What are they and which type is right for you? If you find the tips in today's video useful in your PC build journey, feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any future tech tips. The CPU, or central processing unit, is the brains of your whole system. You'll see CPUs mostly described in terms of cores and clock speeds, none of which are as intimidating as they may seem, and they each refer to different facets of the CPU. Let's start with cores. In times past, a CPU only had one core, one central processing unit. So if a processor is described as dual core, that means there are two central processing units on one CPU chip. More cores mean more processes can be done at the same time on a single piece of hardware. Think of your CPU as a chef in a restaurant and the number of cores as the number of pans he can have going at the same time. Dual core means two pans, quad core means four pans, and so on. You can see how multitasking is a bonus here. Two brands reign supreme when it comes to PC CPUs, AMD and Intel. There is a never-ending battle waging between fans of each, and with each new generation of CPUs, one may slightly edge out the other in online comparisons. Ultimately, read reviews, do your research, and go with what you think will suit your needs the best. If you're shopping Intel, they're generally divided up into i3, i5, i7, and i9, and the higher the number, the higher level of performance and or additional features within a processor generation. After the initial brand modifier, you'll see a dash followed by the generation indicator. For example, an i7-9800 would be a ninth generation CPU, whereas an i7-8800 would be an eighth gen. This is important because 13th Gen i5 may have better performance for your needs than a 12th Gen i7, for example. After the initial brand indicator and the generation indicator, you'll see the skew and sometimes a suffix beyond that. Generally, the higher these numbers, the more features the processor will have. AMD's processors follow a similar naming structure. For AMD, the Ryzen series processors line up in a similar fashion to Intel. Ryzen mainstream processors are Ryzen 5, 7, and 9 series, with more cores and faster speeds as you go up the ladder. AMD also supports integrated graphics models, and they make it easy to identify these by adding a G to the model number. Models without a G would require a separate graphics card. The suffix for both manufacturers is included if there's a feature or something added out of the ordinary, like the ability to overclock or that the base clock speed is a little better right out of the box. Finally, you'll want to consider clock speed or the measure of how many clock cycles a CPU can perform per second. This is measured in Hertz. So does a CPU with more gigahertz mean it's a faster processor? Not exactly. If it's the same type of processor, sure, this might be the case. But newer CPUs are often more efficient, meaning more work gets done per clock cycle. You gotta look at number of cores, the amount of CPU cache memory, features like hyper-threading and overclocking, and of course, read user reviews before you can make the best decision for you. P.S. I know I buzzed right over the term overclocking. That just means you can get more speed than the standard rating on the box. And we've got specific DIY in five videos here on this channel to help you out with overclocking if that's something that you're interested in. When trying to figure out what type of CPU is right for you, consider your anticipated use. For most AAA titles, an AMD Ryzen 5 or Intel i5 processor is about the baseline for smooth gameplay and preventing lag. If you're looking to also stream on the same PC, you'll need a stronger CPU. And remember to match your motherboard chipset and socket, otherwise you won't be able to take full advantage of your CPU or motherboard features like overclocking and more. Okay, now that we've spent most of this episode talking CPUs, let's switch over to RAM or random access memory. If your hard drive acts as your long-term memory, think of RAM like your short-term memory, ready to access frequently used things quickly at a moment's notice. Today's RAM will be one of two types, DDR4 or DDR5. 
You'll want to determine how much RAM you need and what speed and form factor you need. Luckily, we've already done an episode to help you determine exactly that, and you can check that out in the link below. The amount of RAM you need for gaming really depends on the games you want to play since RAM requirements differ for each game title. For specific games, it's important to check the game developer's recommended system requirements. For a clearer idea of how much RAM you will need, check Can You Run It? In addition, you'll want to prioritize whether speed or capacity is your top priority. While not mutually exclusive, higher capacity modules and kits are generally only offered up to mid-range speeds for DDR4. If you have the option to go for dual channel mode instead of single, meaning two 16 gigabyte stick modules instead of one 32 gigabyte module stick, then that will give you greater bandwidth. Overall, your motherboard and CPU are going to be the major determining factors on what kind of DDR RAM you need for your PC, so know those specifications before choosing your RAM. I'd also recommend you check out the Kingston Handy Dandy memory configurator that helps customers find an array of compatible memory module options for your proposed setup. Okay, phew, I know that was a lot, but we're well on our way to having a fully customized PC built by you. If you have a tip to add specifically about CPU or RAM, please leave it in the comments below. And next episode, we'll delve into storage and those super sexy and highly sought after graphics cards. All right, thanks for watching today's episode of DIY in 5, and I'll see you next time.